Hey guys, you're listening to our brand new podcast, Cold Waters, brought to you by Akmal and Sasha. In this podcast, we dive deeper into intriguing true crime stories, discussing possible sus- suspects and their motives, and presenting unique, not so well known stories. If you like true crime or generally have an interest in the bizarre and mysterious, you're gonna love our show. Thanks for tuning in to our first episode, and uh, hope you have fun listening. Three, no. two, Shit. one, and we're live. Okay, okay we're recording. Yeah. Hey, yeah. All right, so today we're gonna, uh, today it's gonna be Sasha that's talking. So uh, you can take over, dog. Okay. So for our very first case, yeah. we're gonna talk about the alphabet murder. Ooh. So. Hmm. This is also known as the double initial murder. God damn. Yeah. So the case basically gets its name as to how the murderer chose his victims, mm. which was based on the girl's surname, which began with the same letter as their first name. So all right? the victims were females. Yep. All three of them. There were only three victims. Okay. So, on the 16th of November, 1971, a young girl around the age of 10 with dark hair, Hmm. she was naked from the waist down and was seen by dozens of drivers who were on their way out of Rochester, New York. She was running along the breakdown lane of the interstate exit uh, from a reversing vehicle, which they didn't really identify. So she was begging for her help from the passersby by frantically waving her arms. And a car backed slowly towards her and a man exited and proceeded to grab her by the arm and led her to the back of the car and just drove away towards the highway. And Honestly, no isn't that them? suspicious? Exactly. Don't, what? Okay. Okay. Roughly 38, okay, had witnessed this. However, I'm, missing. Okay. Yeah. It's however, not a, like a, a common sight. <laughs> exactly. No, it's like a highway. You have like thousands yeah, yeah. of people. Was it in the morning it. or at night? No, it was during day break. It was like morning or the afternoon. Bruh, then everybody's going to work. They're just tired. It's a Monday. Oh, oh, this <laughs> girl. Ah, forget it. Ah, I'm work. They're just so distracted. The thing is, the guy didn't even appear with the weapon. He just grabbed her. Like, there was no weapon on him. Mm. Like, someone could have actually just stepped in. But whatever. Maybe they thought so it was the like missing his person's or he grabbed her. The missing persons report came at, at around 7.50, like, to the police station. Mm. And by this time, the body of the 10-year-old Carmen Cologne had been discovered. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing her second name. She was originally uh, from Puerto Rico before moving to live in one of the most poor areas of Rochester. She went missing that afternoon. The young girl had agreed to run an errand for her grandparents. She needed to pick up prescriptions for her grandfather. So the pharmacy, which was on the West Main Street, which was like two blocks away from where she lived. So she set out shortly like at around 4, 4.20. It was a Wednesday afternoon. 
When she arrived, she was told that the prescription was not ready. So according to the store clerk, she appeared to be in a hurry and stated that she had to go and soon left out of the front door. She was then seen getting into a car that was parked closely to the pharmacy. Two days later, the half-naked body of the little girl was found in Churchwell by the side of the road, which was 12 miles as to where she was last seen alive. Her clothes were scattered far away from her body, where her body laid, which was discovered on the 30th of November. I think that's like 12 days. Yeah. The autopsy autopsy revealed that in in addition to having been raped, she suffered a fracture to her skull and Mm. and one of her vertebrae from being manually strangled to death. Furthermore, her body had been extensively scratched by fingernails. So she was attacked from like the front. It wasn't like from behind her. It was like directly from the front. Mm. And with the murder of Colin and the fact that no one that observed the child attempting to flee from her doctor had attempted to offer her any assistance. So these are like the passers, the civilians. This created intense public outrage. Two New York newspapers, the Time Union and Democrat and Chronicles, initially offered a combined reward of $2,500 for information leading to the arrest of, to the arrest and conviction of her murder. And all information each publication was relayed to the police officers, obviously. Numerous local business and residents added private donations to the reward fund. Although the police interrogated several suspects in the months following to her murder, all were cleared of involvement by the 21st of December. The number of investigators assigned to the case on a full-time basis was decreased to three. They even had billboards up asking if anyone knew who killed her. And whoever came forward with the information would receive a reward of $6,000. I like how they're just bribing people with money. Like, I mean, be like a good citizen and just come forward. Like, why do you need... I don't get it. Like, why come for the sake of money? Like, you, you could be saving... I don't know someone else's life in future because it mean, just gives this person of it like another this, like chance guy, to kill. Some guy, he's like, he saw something, but he's he doesn't remember it well, and then he sees like the six thousand dollars, and he's like, oh shit, okay, there's a reward for me if I like remember it. <laughs> like you get it? Like there's a like, there's a reward of like there's a reward you get for. You do realize I mean, I don't police see it officers as bribing, have this cognitive. No, it's not bribing. It's just like that's just you're not being a good citizen. Like you're just doing it for the sake of money, not for the sake of finding this person and putting them I mean, behind nah, bars. It just looks like, like you're judging the person I mean, who who come who like comes forward. Okay, I'm not judging, but okay. But you are though. You're saying that it's bribing, that's and then anywho. That's what it looks like, okay? Because when we proceed towards like halfway through the case, you would realize how both of the other girls would have been saved if this person, if the people originally came forward and said something. So although this tactic generated several new leads, it was a dead end. The suspect was that the suspect that however stood out for the officers was her uncle, Miguel. Miguel was about brother of her father. Following the separation of her parents, he had formed a relationship with her mother. Just weeks prior to her abduction and murder, her uncle is known to have purchased a car that was closely matching the vehicle seen by eyewitnesses 
reversing upon the Interstate 490. Investigators did conduct a search of this vehicle shortly after her murder, discovering the interior and exterior of the car had been extensively cleaned and the trunk had been washed with a strong cleaning solution. Miguel wait, wait. reveals that the... Yeah. So, which car was it? Like what, what model car was it? It was... I mean, they don't say what model was his car, but according to what they've seen, it was a, it was a Ford. It's a Ford something. Ford something. Yeah, Ford Bento. For Never ben- heard of it. For Pinto. what? Pinto. Pinto. P-I-N-T-O. Pinto. P-I-N-T-O. Damn. I mean, it looks like a pretty typical uh, 70s car. Never. But I mean, the suspicious part is that it's so clean. Yeah, I mean, you would think... Like with a new car, you wouldn't use such strong detergents and everything. It might ruin the leather and stuff. Okay. Why do you do it? Okay. So, he basically revealed that the trunk had not been washed with a detergent prior to the sale. Furthermore, according to a friend of his, two days after the death of his niece, Miguel had informed him to of his intention to leave the country, as he had done something wrong in Rochester. He then relocated from Rochester to Puerto Rico just four days after the murder of his niece. March 26th of 1972, Miguel surrendered to the authorities agreeing to going back to Rochester to face questioning. He was unable to provide a credible alibi for his whereabouts on the day of his niece's murder. No individual could be tracked in order to confirm his whereabouts. Wait, Despite okay. Despite this, yeah. So, this guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, when she when she got out of the pharmacy and she went into the car, it sounded like she knew the person in the car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, but it could also be what do you call those people? Like like a social. Like like a fireman or a police officer oh, yeah. off duty, you know, like those people, because they would look trusting or something, you know. Mm, so, I'm not sure though, unless it was like a cop car. I don't think I would ever go into a guy's car just because he said he's an off duty cop. I mean, what if what if she's a ten year old girl? I guess she's naive, but I mean, they kind of grow up in like poor areas, so yeah, I mean, they kind of. Smarter than it's that. like you have to trust you have to trust them I don't know well despite the strong circumstantial evidence that ties him to the investigation there wasn't any physical evidence and physical evidence is very important mm, yeah. so Miguel committed suicide in 1991 at the age of 44 following an incident of domestic violence in which he shot and wounded both his wife and his brother. So that basically somehow clears him off because he can't arrest him. Then 17 months later, at around 5 p.m. on April 2nd, 1973, her 11-year-old Wanda, that's her name, disappeared from the east side of Rochester while returning home from the grocery store. I like how both girls are running errands. So, mm, yeah. Her mother reported her missing at 8 p.m. The police immediately launched an intense search to locate her. Around 50 detectives searched the areas She was least seen and her house premises, as well as the areas she frequently visited. Smart. Mm -hmm. Neighbors, however, recall seeing her, seeing a girl around her age, bracing the bag of groceries against a fence so that she would, she could improve her grip upon the bag as a brown vehicle drove past her. That was the only thing they could identify. Wanda's fully clothed 
clothed body was found by a police officer at around 10.15 the following day. This carded at the base of a hillside alongside an access road to the state route 104 in Webster that was approximately seven miles from Rochester. Position of her body suggests that she was thrown off a moving vehicle. Wow. Autopsy revealed that she had been sexually assaulted, then strangled from behind with a ligature, most likely a belt. She had several defensive wounds, which meant she tried to fight for murder. Her body had been redressed after death. She was also she was also like seen with like cat fur all over her. It also revealed semen, pubic hair on her body, which gave the officers a good head start. There were also white cat fur found on her clothes and her family didn't own any animals, so couldn't be hers. Just mm. like Colin's case, the officers offered a reward to those that came forward. This time, $10,000. The witness came forward stating that as she had walked home that day from the store, she was seen conversing with the driver of the brown vehicle. See, now that, that's just like, it was someone that these people could easily trust because yeah. it's like twice in a row. So, what was her full name? Her full name, I don't know. It was Wanda something with W. It was long. Bro, I can't you say it. get your research better, man. Let me just search it. I, I can't say the name, okay? Why not? Alphabet. Wanda Walkowicz. I'm sure that's not how you say it. Okay. A witness came forward stating that when she had seen Wanda conversing with the driver of the brown vehicle, the eyewitness could not recall the face of the man, although the location of her sighting was just two tenths of a mile from where she lived. Right. So another witness, however, came forward stating that she had observed a man forcing a red-haired girl matching Wanda's description into a light-colored Dodge Dobbert. Honky Avenue between 5.30 and 6 p.m. On the evening of her disappearance, the Rochester police dismissed any suggestions of a link between the murders of Colin and Wanda. Although a sheriff's surgeon who had been assigned to investigate Colin's murder, which was still open but inactive, was also in charge of Wanda's case. Mm. In September 1973, local TV network announced plans to broadcast a televised reconstruction of Wanda's abduction. This 30-minute episode was broadcasted on 21st of October, demonstrating by public appeals for witnesses to contact authorities. There were still no useful leads. And seven months later, Wanda's award on the evening of November 26, 1973, 11-year-old Mikhail, Michelle Manez, however you say it, was mm-hmm. reported missing by her mother, Carolyn, after she failed to return home from school. Mm. Damn, okay. Wait, okay, so yeah. her mom, she doesn't return from school? School. She's, so yep. does she get to school or not? She does. It's like on her way home, she goes missing. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I was getting confused there. She was last seen by her best friends at around 3.20 p.m. Walking alone to the shopping plaza that was located close to her school. Approximately 10 minutes later, a witness observed her sitting in the passenger seat of a beige tan vehicle, traveling at high speed on Arkender Street before turning onto Webster. 
Avenue. According to the witness, the child had been weeping. Okay, like, do you not? Do you not like? <sighs> yeah, how is that not suspicious? Exactly. I mean, call. What is wrong off. with these people, man? Rochester is wild, bro. It's wild. That's the U.S. after all. At 5.30 on November 26, motorist observed a man standing by a large beige, close to a beige tan vehicle with a flat tire parked alongside Route 350 in the town of, damn, these people have weird names, well, Worth or something, okay? I was holding a girl by, he strongly believed to be Michelle, by her by the wrist when this motorist had stopped to offer assistance thank you he oh god the individual grabbed the girl and pushed her behind his back also observing his license plate from the motorist view as he stared in his direction with such i i don't get it like do people just get scared by someone's stares like he isn't holding a goddamn weapon an expression oh, yeah. on his face that the motorist had le- felt compelled to drive away. I mean, while you're driving away, can't you at least call the goddamn cops? Like, I know, right? My God. I mean, don't they have like those security cameras on highways? I mean, it's the seventies, bro. It's not like everybody carrying iPhones. According to this shit on TikTok, boy, oh, you abducting a kid. <laughs> However, Michelle was fully clothed, clothed, so she wasn't half naked, my Colin. Okay. Her body was discovered at 10.30 a.m. on 28th of November, lying face down in a ditch alongside a Ooh. rural road. Yeah. Approximately 15 miles from Rochester. Her autopsy revealed that in addition to receiving extensive blunt force trauma to the body, she had been raped, then strangled to death from behind with a ligature, possibly a thin rope. That's all. Wait, okay, so was there any evidence of rape? Mm, Yep. Semen. Ooh, so did they do like a DNA analysis on the semen? Check it out with that McGill guy. He seems pretty, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, in the pre- in Wanda's case, they thought the ligature was a belt and hers is possibly a thin rope. But I don't know. It's like they haven't really confirmed as to what it was because they're like two different murder weapons there. Mm. So humorous white cat fur was found on her clothing as well and leaf samples matching the culture where her body was discovered. So she has leaves all over her. Okay. Discovered where she was recovered from within one of her clenched hands, which indicated she had likely been strangled to death at or near the location where she was found. So he didn't like have a dump site for her. The dump site was where he oh, killed yeah, her. Yeah. Investigators were able to retrieve a portrait palm print from where her neck and traces of semen upon her body and underwear. The forensic analyst of the semen sample determined she had been raped by murderer. An analyst of the contents of her stomach revealed traces of her hamburger and onions, which had been consumed approximately one hour before her murder, giving credence to earlier reports of a girl matching her description, having been sent with a having been seen with a Caucasian man with dark hair, aged between 25 and 35, approximately six feet tall weighing around 75 kgs like. Both at a fast food restaurant in town of Penfield at approximately 3.30 on the afternoon of her disappearance. So It was Route 350. So when they saw her with the man, did she look distressed? Like asking, 
it's like saying a girl okay coming from a poor state while eating is going to look distressed no she's not going to look distressed she's going to enjoy the food i mean you're not going to enjoy the food if you know the guy who's giving you the food's going to murder you like well she didn't so that's she... the thing the guy is the guy probably appeared trusting okay mm. she didn't know what mm. was she was getting yeah, that's herself why I was into did she look distressed oh no Investigators interrogated more than 800 Whoa. potential Whoa. suspects to the murders of these three girls, but the murderer was never caught. Hence, the case remained unsolved. The things that link these three girls, other than their first names and surnames, starting with the same letter, would be that they all were around the same age. Mm-hmm. All three came from Catholic families. Mm-hmm. All three struggled at school. Oh, all three okay. came from poor neighborhoods, and mm-hmm. all three girls didn't have fathers in their life. Literally, all their fathers left them. The so, common factor in their murder, yeah. This McGill guy, like, was he in the country when these, like, when they, when Wanda, and uh, no, he want he committed suicide before Wanda's murder. When The thing that? is, Miguel only links. to Colin's case because if you like look at it closely Colin's measure compared to Wanda's and Michelle's were different so i don't know some say that it's like her murder was a different one compared to the two of them because mm. Wanda's and Michelle there's like strong links between them so mm. Yeah. And the other common factors in their murders would be that all three were found in rural areas. All three were discovered. Always matched the leather of their name. All three were strangled and sexually assaulted. Yikes. What was the age range? 10 and 11. Ooh. Hi. Okay. Now arriving to the suspects that were most promising one individual that however considered a strong suspect was 25 year old Rochester firefighter like i said Dennis Termini why do these people have weird second names oh. he was a pro- prolific mm. serial offender how does he have a job like i know right yeah as the garage rapist great people at a garage there he was also known to have committed a minimum of 14 rapes of teenage girls and young women between 1971 and 1973 so practically all three cases happened Wait. between <laughs> those two years garage rapist i mean yep i've heard of garage sales but this is new and weird names Yeah. Also, Bro, he wait. was known. So how how is he not convicted for this crime? If he's been, I mean, he was. But the thing is, physical evidence <sighs> that was that couldn't link him. I don't think the semen was also a match. It didn't link. Damn it. Uh, okay. How old was he? Twenty five. Yeah, around that. Twenty five years. Damn, yeah. this guy was young, man. Mm. Also, was known to own a beige vehicle. similar to the description given by several eyewitnesses he was also known to have lived at an address on Gulf Street close to where the victims Michelle had last been seen alive five weeks after the death of the final victim 1st Jan oh maybe here of 1974 Dennis was known to have attempted to abduct a teenage girl at gunpoint although he fled the scene with the t- when the teenager refused to cease by screaming shortly after he abducted another potential victim however the police caught him and before they could do anything he shot himself in the head ah damn bastard i, I like Took how the easy way like, out suicide yeah there was also white cat fur found in his vehicle whoa damn Okay, this guy has like strong connections now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Jan 2007, his body was examined in order to obtain DNA samples for comparison with the semen samples recovered from Wanda's body. 
It was, however, confirmed he was not responsible for her murder. Yes. What about the other semen? Nor samples? were there any physical. The semen no, samples taken match. from the other. Like, room. if it doesn't match. No, there was only it was only taken from Wanda's and Michelle's. I don't think Colin. Okay, wait. Samples. What's the evidence that these three cases are done by the same perpetrator? Other than the fact, other that than the, the fact that they were all three sexually assaulted, yeah. uh, same areas, literally okay. all practically lived close by, mm, okay. and I mean they were killed the exact same way except for Colin, I guess. Because she was attacked from the front. Meanwhile, mm. the other two were attacked from behind, but they were strangled the same way. I mean, yeah, I guess. You could I don't say. know. It could be a copycat. Mm, nah, I mean, he's not that infamous yet, so how can he have copycats? Or else, right? I don't know. Maybe it's like a duo thing, or this guy had a partner. It has to be mm. just one of the two. I think it was just one of them. I don't think because there was only one semen sample found there unless the other guy didn't or the other girl but she the victims weren't seen with anyone else right no damn it man it's However, just so sad like so many people saw the perpetrator but nobody did shit yeah now that's that's what I, it's they could have avoided what? all of this this wouldn't have been an unsolved case it would have been solved if one of them had the guts to come forward okay moving to our next suspect Kenneth Bianchi. I like that way. Okay. To those into true crimes, the name Kenneth Bianchi will probably be well known. He is not well known to me. So <laughs> Kenneth is a Rochester. <laughs> Kenneth was a Rochester, New York native and was one and a wait, one and a half of the mill sized stranglers who were responsible for the deaths of 10 women between 1971 and 1978. He was caught when he committed a pair of murders without his partner, Angelo, and made a mess of the crime scene. Damn, faggot. That's like, yeah, that's like a major giveaway. You mess up the scene. He was still, he still lived in Rochester at the time of the alphabet murder. He didn't move to LA until 1975 so that means he was in Rochester yeah he was employed as an ice cream vendor see again people you trust a security guard how do these people have jobs with like criminal records like that like especially jobs like that you know I don't get it mm -hmm. and an ambulance driver all of which provided him uniforms so you would trust anyone wearing a uniform like, you can't mm. deny that. But they weren't Unless a guy a acts like a complete creep. Whoever the person was, wasn't wearing a uniform. Because the people in the hamburger shop didn't... They, no, they had to be wearing uniforms. Like, how else would these girls just get into a vehicle? It's not like they're no, just but no, but, Oh, I'm a firefighter. Bro, listen. When they were... When whoever that person was with... Uh, was it Wanda? I'm not sure. Oh my god, unless they bribed them with like animals like i know people would like you'd see a lost cat or something i mean that could explain <laughs> cat fur honestly well your cute your theories are so cute <laughs> no, 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 with no. An animal. no but like <laughs> yeah like you could lure them it's like luring a child with candy is your first thought like it's they okay well what child is so dumb they're gonna walk into a white van and it's gonna be like i'm gonna give you a box of sneakers hey, do you know how many cases hey, have just walk in like 600 other kids that in the van happened. just with their mouth duct taped and just tied up unconscious like, what's this and like oh you the never candy's know okay. the back. and you go in the back and they check where's the candy at psych gets roofied and whatnot man no kids that dumb i don't think so lured in and plus they're in a poor That's neighborhood me. man they know better they came from puerto rico dog mm. the homies over there Crazy. Yeah, but like, I mean, like, take Michelle for example. Yeah, she was probably starving, and obviously she would have gone to that restaurant with him, stranger or not. What do you, What do you mean, probably starving? I mean, he should have. Pres he must like poor, right? I mean, these people barely had, they barely afforded stuff. Mm, okay. Uh, like okay. they all came there. from really poor backgrounds. 
Mm-hmm. Or maybe he was just really friendly. Yeah, thought too. Charismatic. But then I don't get it how it scared the motorist away. Like, yeah, he didn't yeah. have a gun or a knife. Bro, like that's the dumbest thing. I got scared. Anything. I got scared. Some some little girl was crying. I, I was just, I was just chilling in my car listening to Rolling Stone and I got scared. I saw this guy and I got scared. It scared me, man. Oh. Bro, it's weird. I, I, honestly I feel no like idea. the whole town of Rochester is just conspiring right now. <laughs> just, I wonder what it's like right now, like the areas where they lived. I mean, I bet this guy is dead now. Yeah, mm, he's probably dead. Yeah, probably is. Or he's like really old and he got back pain right and, now. <laughs> and he must be really proud of getting away with a murder. Yeah. It. Schmuck. So the thing wait, that ties Kenneth is that he had there was forensic evidence from the crime scene of Wanda's murder. He was a very good suspect on paper at least but there was still no physical evidence to tie him so police had decided to match a wrist print they had obtained from from michelle's murder yeah and compare it to kenneth's and it wasn't a match so uh. no physical evidence however it should be said that the wrist prints could change over time as the skin alters and loses elasticity. So I could not completely mm, yeah. revive him out as there was 10 years gap. Shit, that's a long time. I don't know. Between the prints being... There was no evidence that Kenneth killed anyone before teaching up... Yeah, before taking up, teaming up with Angelo. Buono. And I swear these people have weird second names. Buono. And had... Bueno. Oh, that sounds Mexican. Bueno, amigo. Bueno. Hey, Kinder Bueno. Kinder Bueno. Na, 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 na. I remember so those ads from NBC3. Yeah, oh, shit. What were you saying? <laughs> I forgot we were recording. <laughs> so, according to Kenneth, th- this is, like, so bold. It's like he's trying to act like I don't know. So this guy, his mm-hmm. story, right, is mm-hmm. that he hasn't committed any murder okay. after oh. teaming up with Angelo. So he was like to the police to either charge him or leave him alone. Like, okay. As he was tired okay, of being linked to murders. God damn. Like, he just admitted he <laughs> did do murders. He was like, I didn't do any murders no, after... Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, but then like he's the admitting team. to doing the murders with his whoever, with his no, they cousin. Know, no, the police knows that. Police Mr. knows Kinder that. Bueno. So they didn't arrest him. I mean, there was no physical evidence. So our last suspect, I don't know, for him, he seems so much stronger for some reason. I don't know. On April 11, 2012, police arrested a 77-year-old Joseph Nasso and charged him with the murders of four women. Oh, God. His victims were... Oh, wow. Roxanne, Tracy, and Carmen. There were no relations to, to the Rochester victims. All were prostitutes. And... And they weren't exactly linked to the double initial. I mean, their names were like the double initial names of his victims. So these crimes were referred to as the alphabet murders of California. So that is, I mean, usually serial killers, most if they stick to like a comfort zone, right? So yeah, yeah. I don't think it could be him. I don't know. Well, during a search of his house, police found a disturbing journal that had been kept by him. In the journal, he wrote about... This is like a complete... Okay. About how he overpowered and raped and killed 10 victims. Eventually, two more of these victims would be identified as Sarah Dylan and Cheris. Unfortunately, the other four women remain unidentified 
he also had a numerous pictures of women in various states of untrust and seemingly unconscious, some of which were found to be his murder victims. Not only was Naso linked due to the double initial of his victims and those in Rochester alphabet murders, but also because his modus operandi was to offer a lift in his vehicle before murdering his victims. See, now runaways, they'd accept it. I don't think it would like link the girl. The thing is, like when you grow up in neighborhoods like that, that are poor, I don't know, I feel like they would be smart enough to act up on their own. So, I mean, I it's a 10 year old girl, 10, 11 year old girls, man. Police were also given further hope as Joseph was born in Rochester, New York, and lived there for many years, including the time period when the young girls were murdered. As promising as all this seems, the police and the families of the victims were left disappointed yet again as Nasso was later cleared of the Rochester murder by DNA evidence. Oh. Look how sad that is. I'm seeing photos of this guy. I swear to God he did it. His eyes, man. I swear to God. His eyes. Freaky shit, dog. No, it sucks that like none of these families could have gotten closure from what happened. I don't know. I feel like that's like the sad part of unsolved cases where families yeah. just don't receive that closure mm. they need. Well, that's the end of our case. Who do you think it is? I don't know. I think my money would be on Dennis, the firefighter. Mm. Still don't get how the guy had a job. Like, honestly, any of them. Well, Joseph yeah. Fent. He's probably like a retired guy. <laughs> Bro, what? I mean, they all seem so plausible, but this Joseph Nasso guy. This Joseph Nasso guy He's and the uh, Hillside Killer. Mm-hmm. They're already, both of them are already convicted of killings. So I think plausibly. So is Dennis. Probably kill teenage girls. No, but he and the guy still had a job. Board. Like <laughs> <laughs> they were like, I don't know. Rochester doesn't have that many firemen. They need that workforce, I guess. But it must be so easy. I bet you can get jobs there, like with a criminal record. No, you Holy can't. Suck. Now I'm yeah, sure well, you can. Yeah, well, they did. I saw this video of a guy. He he had like a criminal record for possession of drugs, and he couldn't get a job. And there was this. Uh, apartment owner or something and he was like you know what i'll give anybody with a criminal record uh an apartment because usually they look at your criminal record and then give you the apartment with this and he couldn't get an apartment because he had a criminal record so he was talking about it and he was like a pedophile could get a a house in that apartment but he couldn't because he had a drug possession charge and that guy didn't want drugs sold in his apartment so I mean, I just got sidetracked, but I'm just saying, like, maybe back then it was just harder for someone to get a hold of. Did you know record. that? Wait, I forgot the state. They've recently legalized drugs. Like anyone can just possess drugs in that state. I forgot the state in oh, the U.S. What? That's marijuana. Yes. It's marijuana. It's not every drug ever. No. No, no, no. Wait. Oregon, I think you're talking about. No, no, no. Oh, yes. Washington, D.C. Well, I know. Not not Washington. This recent election, so many uh, states came out and they were going to like legalize marijuana. Oregon, Washington, D.C., they legalized. I think they're already, but, or maybe they're like uh, voting. It's Oregon. On it, but, Oregon. Oregon, yeah. Man. I mean, this seemed like a pretty fucked up. Fucked up. Murder. 11 year old girls. Yikes. Damn, alright, so that's it for today, I guess. Yeah. Tune in, tune in next time. And uh, 
Signing off. Do 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 do.